let's see how to add an advanced item to Minecraft. All right, fans, us back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding an advanced item to Minecraft. I call advanced item items that have a custom class associated with them. So what does that exactly mean? Well, let's go into our item package, right click new package called custom. And then inside of that package, we're going to right click new Java class called the dowsing rod item. Okay, so what is this going to entail? Well, the dowsing rod, the general idea here is that what we're going to be able to do with this is we're going to right click the ground and then it's going to check all of the blocks that are below the block that we've clicked. And if it hits a valuable block, then it's going to output that block and its coordinates inside of the chat. Now, this is definitely a really freaking cool just way of showing how a, you know, custom item here works, how a custom item class works with an advanced item. And what we need to do is we need this to extend the item class, making sure that we choose net Minecraft item right here. And then we need to hover over this, create constructor matching super, and then basically we can proceed. Now what we can do is we can middle mouse button click on this item class, and we can take a look at all of the possible methods that we can override. So this is one part where you need some Java knowledge, specifically object-oriented programming knowledge, because, you know, the this is basically now a subclass of this item class and the idea is that of course subclasses can overwrite certain methods and add functionality to them and this is exactly what we're going to do so we are going to overwrite the use on block method because this is of course called when an item is used on a block so when i right click on a block then this method here basically is called and everything that i put in it is then basically executed but as you can see there are some more methods in here there's actually quite a few methods so there's plenty of stuff that you can override in your custom item class. So the way that this works is you can either type in override and then you can see all of the methods that you can override or what you can also do is start to type the name of the method. So for example, use on block as you can see, and then I'm just going to press the tab key and it is going to automatically autocomplete here. So when it comes to the code, what I will actually do is I will first of all copy over two they're very important methods that we're going to need. That is the boolean method is valuable block and then also the output valuable coordinates. And I will explain what those do in just a second. So the is valuable block method should be fairly self-explanatory. It simply returns a boolean and it simply checks whether or not the pass block that we're passing in this method is either coal ore, copper ore, diamond ore, or iron ore. So basically, hey, is this block, whatever block we pass in, is this a valuable block, meaning it is, is it coal or copper or diamond or iron? Now the outputting of the coordinates should also not be too crazy. We're basically just passing a few things in that we need. So for example, the player, we're then sending that player a message that is basically going to be getting the block that we're just checking, getting the block position of that block, and then just printing that out. So this is of course only called when we actually find a particular valuable block. So this would only ever be in our case, coal, copper, diamond, or iron ore that is being output here. That's the general idea. Now we're actually gonna copy over the rest of the method here and I will explain everything line by line. It's just a little bit easier for me to basically just copy it over and then explain everything that is going on here. What's very important, all of the code is of course available to you in the description below, GitHub repository or individual gists. So no worries there, you don't have to type everything out here. Basically looking at the screen, that would be madness. Just take a look at that and you can basically copy it over as well. And now I will explain. So the if statement right here checks whether or not we are on the client thread. The general idea is that that Minecraft is basically separated into two threads. That is the server thread and the client thread. So the client thread is everything that you see, the GUI, stuff like that, right? So that is all done on the client. Now the server has some other responsibilities, stuff like changing blocks, change the position of players, things like that. So things that you don't want your clients to be able to do. So if you have a server, for example, and you have 10 people on it, you don't want the 10 people to just be able to change all of the blocks to like diamond blocks. That should be something that only the server can do. And in this case, what we're going to ask is actually, we want to be on the client. Okay, fair enough. Then we're going to get the block position of the block that we've just right clicked. Because remember, the use on block method is called when we right click a block. Meaning that the context.get block position gets us the block position of the block state that we've just right clicked. That should be sensible here. Then we're getting the player. And then we're just making a boolean variable right here and setting it to false. What we're then going to do is we're then going to start at zero 
and going all the way to the position that we clicked. Now, what's very interesting here is that we actually want to add 64 to this, and I'll explain why in just a moment. But the general idea is that we're going to start at zero and we're going to count up i all the way up to the y level that we've clicked plus 64. Now, reasoning being why this we need this 64 here is, of course, because the world now ends at negative 64 instead of zero. And we can't put in negative 64 here because of the way that we're doing it right here. So we're basically getting the block below the block that we've just clicked. And we're getting this by getting the world, then the block state of the block. So the block state is just the representation of a block inside of the world. We're going to go into detail about block states in a future tutorial, but then we have to basically pass in the position that we're going to take a look at and we're going to get the position down by i. So i, like I said in the beginning, is going to be zero and we're going to count up all the way to the actual position that we're at. So as soon as i has reached get y, we would be taking a look at position zero. So while i is counting up, this one basically goes down, right? So we have our block that we've clicked and then we have the block below it and then we have another block below it and another block below it, let's just say. Yes. and if this is zero, we're going to take a look at the block that we just clicked. If this is one, then we're going to go down by one and then continuing on until basically we've reached all the way down to the very end of the world. That's the general idea. We're just getting the block, then asking, hey, is this block valuable? So we're going to pass it into our custom method right here. And if it is valuable, well, then we're going to output the coordinates. We're going to say found block is true and we're going to break out of the for loop. And if the block isn't valuable, well, nothing happens. We're just going to continue with the for loop basically until we have found a valuable block, right? And then you can see here as well, if we have not found a block, then we're going to send the player a message that is translated with this key. So I'm going to show you this in just a moment. We want to add this to the en underscore us JSON file. That is going to be fine. Now, once we're done with this, at the end here, we're also going to damage the item. So this would be the dowsing rod item via the stack. So the stack is basically the actual item that we're holding in our inventory that we right click with. We're going to damage this by one, giving the player and then and then this consumer of player, which basically just sends the break status right here. That's the general idea of the use on block method. Overall, it shouldn't be too crazy because this is actually not that complicated, all things considered. So what we do need to do is we need to take this and I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to go to the lang en underscore us json file and at the very bottom here, I'm going to add this so like this and then we're going to just say no valuables found. There you go. So that should work now as well. So that's going to be great. And now the real question is one very important thing when you have advanced items. So when you have a custom item class, if this is gray right here, you have made a mistake because what you need to do is you need to, of course, make the actual item here as well. We need to register the item. So what we could do is we can say, you know, we're going to just copy this over and we're going to say dowsing underscore rod. And we're going to say dowsing underscore rod. And then you might say, well, there we are. We have it. This is still gray. Why is it still gray? Because we have forgotten to make a new dowsing rod item. This is incredibly important because now when you go in here, you can see this is yellow and this is white and no longer gray incredibly important that we make sure that this is cold right here. Otherwise, it will, of course, not work. Now, this is still an item, so we still need an item model JSON. Once again, I can just copy over the mithril ingot and I'm going to say dowsing underscore rod. And then the same goes here, dowsing underscore rod. And the texture I will just copy over once more. So there you go, dowsing rod texture. And that is it. Now we have added the dowsing rod item to the game. We've made the custom class right here and this functionality should work exactly how you would want it to. And of course, let's not forget to add the dowsing rod here as well so that the item also has a name. And then, well, we have done everything that we need to do to basically add the item and have the functionality here working. So let's see if it works. All right, finds us back in Minecraft. So let's just right click. No valuables found. No valuables found. Let's see. So wait, let's see if we can find some value. There we have iron ore. We found it right there. Coal ore right there. Let's see more iron ore. So I can also just keep the right click pressed and I can, you know, go around and basically find all of the, well, different things. Iron ore, coal ore again. So there you basically go. All of this is done. Now there's one more thing that we actually need to change and that is the well behavior of the stacking. So of course right now they can stack which is something that we don't want to have happen. So let's just change that quickly as well. 
right? It's actually fairly straightforward. So in the dowsing rod item, in the fabric item settings, what we're going to do is we're going to make a max damage right here. And this is going to be, let's say, 16. So as soon as we set the max damage, you can see that the actual count here will always be set to 1, basically, because, of course, if you have, you know, max damage for a particular item, you can't have it stacked. That's the general idea here, and that will basically enable you to also work with the damage as well. Right, but that would already be it for the advanced item tutorial. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate a like, and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. So, yeah.